Imposter syndrome in analytics is real. It can catch you off guard when you have years of experience, and sometimes it stops people before they even get started. There's a good chance you've heard of imposter syndrome or fraud syndrome before, but in case you haven't, let's talk a little bit about what it is. Imposter syndrome is when you doubt your skills, talents, or accomplishments. A lot of times it comes with a fatalistic outlook. That is, you expect that in the future somebody's going to figure out you're faking it or you're a fraud, or nobody's going to want to hire you for that next job, or maybe in your case for that first job in analytics. Your perception doesn't line up with reality. It's a lot simpler to talk about imposter syndrome for people that have already been working in the field for a while. You can more easily objectively step back and say that you've been successful, you've been able to do the work, you've gotten good performance reviews, you've gotten promotions. You can look at outside influences saying that you're qualified and you're competent in what you're doing. But what about when this pops up for you when you're learning and you're not sure if you can get that first job? It can be a struggle to know if these doubts are well-founded and you really don't know enough to be stepping into your first analytics job, or they can crop up because you're focusing on all of the things that you don't know and seeing all of the places that you fall short. I think this is something that comes up a lot with imposter syndrome. Instead of focusing on what you know and looking a little bit more at your own isolated skills or talents, capabilities, you turn outward and see what are all of the things I don't know how to do. That's really easy to do when we're talking about any analytics job, whether we're talking about data analysts, data scientists, business analysts, or one of the many other variations on those titles. When we look at how they're applied across all different industries and all different companies, they're not 100% the same. There's a lot of similarities. There are some base skills that are the same. There's base knowledge that is the same. But then there's many variations. There's different programming languages you can know. There's different tools that you can learn. There's even different specialties that you can know more or less about in the field. That can make it really hard if you're already inclined to feel like you're an imposter, you're a fraud, that maybe your skills aren't up to par because you're focusing on all of the things that you don't know. Even I sometimes have this feeling, and when I look objectively at it, it doesn't make any sense. I've been working in these fields for 15 years. I've received promotions almost every year. I have my own successful consulting company. I'm able to do the work consistently, effectively, saving many, many hours, saving hundreds of millions of dollars, making millions of dollars for companies through the work that I do. There's no reason I should ever feel that. And yet, when I look at everything I know, I can code in three languages, I know dozens of different analytics tools, I can easily find more that I don't know than what I do know. I can find many languages I don't know how to program in. I can find many tools that I don't yet know how to use. And if I focus on those, I'm always gonna feel like I'm never quite good enough. This feeling that you can improve is in itself a positive thing. Thing. With some of that, it drives you to get better, it drives you to keep learning, continually build and improve, and that's really healthy. But it can also get to be unhealthy if that's all you focus on. If you focus on what you don't know, what you're not able to do, instead of also recognizing all of the things that you are capable of and that you are skilled in. There's a good chance you don't have the same experience that I have. You haven't been working in the field for as long. You maybe don't know as many different tools as I know. You maybe haven't even gotten that first job. So how do you know if what you're running into to is imposter syndrome or like I said that you're not quite ready for that first job. There are two great questions that you can ask yourself and these two questions come from an article from Daniel Che talking about how to get your first job in tech. He and I had some discussion about this article and I wanted to share with you the two criteria that he recommended. 
The first is to ask yourself, have you solved problems outside of the learning context? That is beyond just the training that you've been doing, and this includes any projects you've had during your training, are you using all of these skills you're building outside of that? Are you doing things on your own? Are you either doing personal projects or solving business problems in your current job for a friend or family member's business, etc.? Are you using those skills somewhere else? The second question, can you communicate what you're learning in simple terms? This is often tricky, but it tends to show a mastery of the information that you haven't just been able to absorb it and be able to use it yourself, but you could also explain what you're doing in a simple way. Usually simple explanations tend to show a greater comprehensive understanding than really complex explanations. Because to be able to distill down to a simple explanation, you usually understand a lot more and then need to parse out what's important so that you can be more concise. So that's the second suggestion that he had. And I think it's a great one. I think both of these questions are great things to ask yourself. If you can answer positively to both of those questions, then it's a good time to look at what more do you need to do? That may be as simple as starting to take everything you're learning and work on things outside of a training environment, outside of a college class, outside of a boot camp environment, outside of a, an online class or training that you're doing. Learning in those environments is fantastic. It's excellent to start to build your skills, but then taking things to a less defined environment and still being able to use them, that really starts to show that you understand what you're doing. And if you can do those things already, then there is a chance that what you're dealing with is more imposter syndrome. It's hard to move past that fully until you get into that first job and you are doing well, you're excelling at it. And it doesn't mean imposter syndrome will never creep up again. Like I said, this happens to people that have been doing it for ages and ages that have lots of experience, lots to show. There are plenty of people that are famous, that are well-renowned in their fields that still face this, that still deal with that creeping doubt that comes in. If you're dealing with this, if these thoughts start to creep in, step back and try to look more objectively. Look at what you know, look at what you've accomplished, look at what your capabilities actually are, and try to be a little more objective. Like I mentioned, it's healthy, it's very good to look at things and say, how can I get better? What do I still have to learn? If you are 100% confident that you are the most capable person ever and someone would be foolish to not hire you, then, well, first, you're probably not watching this video, so I'm probably not talking to you. But that's something to also consider. It's rare, it is exceptional that someone would not have something else to learn. I would say it's impossible that there wouldn't be something more that someone could learn. I find it extremely unlikely that anyone would have ever fully mastered everything that there possibly is to know when it comes to analytics and all of the niche areas and all of the different tools. So if you're going into it with that attitude, that's something to work on. But again, I don't think if you're watching this video that you're considering that because you don't have to worry about imposter syndrome. This video has been a bit different from what I normally talk about, but I think it's an important aspect of analytics to address. It's an important aspect of careers to address. People deal with imposter syndrome. It's common. It doesn't mean that you're not qualified. It just means that you need to take a step back, look objectively, make changes where they're needed, but also focus on what you are able to do. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next week.